Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode, installment, video or audio file of Experience Kills. I am your host Ben and I am here today with the one and only Richard. Hello everybody, I am in your video, audio file, whatever you're listening to, watching. <laughs> that 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 thing you do, yes. yeah. And today we're, we're looking at a... Quite a sort of small in scope game, um, sort of an indie game that I think, yeah, it's it, it, it achieves what it set out to do, and that is Rico uh, on I think pretty much everything right now PC, Xbox, PlayStation, you know, everything except Switch, anyway. And Rico, the Rico setup is brilliant in its simplicity. So imagine a city overrun with hardened criminals you are an overly militarized police force given carte blanche to basically kick in doors and do what you do best i.e shoot bad guys in the face and that's what this game is it's a first person shooter it plays uh, you can have it as split screen uh, online co-op or in single player there's uh, a couple of like challenge modes there's some leaderboards um, there's some shop elements but really at its core where it's most fun is getting online like me and Richard did together and just clearing some levels just going through these randomly generated uh, various levels finding some evidence picking up weapons and blowing people away you say we enjoyed it yeah did we enjoy it I think we did I enjoyed it yeah, I think. Did you I, not, are you not so sure? Well, I went into it thinking I I would hate it because it looks mm. kind of second rate, doesn't it? Frankly, um, um, it looks like a small studio made it. Yeah, which you can tell that you know it looks a little bit cut and paste, like basic assets kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I I guess so. It's made by a, a little studio actually called Ground Shatter. And it's being published by uh, Rising Star. And it's all from the UK, basically. Mm. I believe they're like... Um, I don't want to say now what town. I know it was... I think it was Bristol. Um, but Brizzle. I could be wrong. Bristol. Bristol. Um, and, you know, when I, when I found that out... Uh, and I got a code for it. I got just one code, and I got in touch with them. And I was like, "Look, can I get another code so so me and Richard can play together?" Um, because I really like, you know, supporting the yeah. indie dev studios from the UK. Because there's, yeah, there's more than you realise. But I think it's easy to just see games as products and not really acknowledge where they come from. And I actually think that often speaks a lot to the uh, to the, the final product. You've made me feel really bad now. What, because you didn't love it? <laughs> well, no. Well, I say it looked second rate. That was my first impression, right? But yeah. I did enjoy it. And I, I do appreciate the code. That hasn't swayed my opinion of it at all. I think it's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I thought of it, legit. But, um, yeah, it looked a bit sort of off the shelf sort of assets, but I did enjoy it. It's a really simple shooter. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, with you sort of um, telling me when to kick a door down, because... Everyone, if you hadn't guessed, Ben likes to be in charge. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, being, told, being told when to kick a door down, sliding through it, and just taking people out, John Woo style. Um, it didn't feel like ultra smooth, but it was a hell of a lot of fun to do it. And you just wanted to just kick in the next door, clear the next room, and it's got it's got a hell of a lot of pace to it. And um, yeah. it just feels immediate, doesn't it? It's something you can just crack out when you've got mates over um, and play sort of multiplayer um, or just you know kill a, kill a quick 20 minutes with a few rounds is good yeah I mean it's a sub it's a sub 20 quid game uh, $20 in the US and um, it, it's one of those sort of concepts that is not overly complicated is easy to grasp you know exactly what you're going to get there's, there's like a this video that runs when you first load up the game i think it might run every time you load up the game which is basically this long-winded opening cutscene that does all the narrative work basically uh about what the world is and you know some level of justification for your extremely violent response to the criminal element in this game um and then you know it does layer on some light rpg mechanics as well um so you've got like a, a leveling system where you you can get unlocking traits uh, and abilities as you play more of the game and then there's like a branching story mode uh, which i think is perhaps giving a bit too much credence to the word story it, it's sort of like a roguelike adventure isn't it so it's a, yeah. a branching path you can take yeah. different routes through it's different each time you play and you've got to kind of survive until the end your your health doesn't mm. regenerate you can sort of pay for yep. your health to 
regenerate after each round but the challenge is keep enough ammo and health to get to the end and defeat the final boss sort of thing. And you're getting new guns, aren't you? Which yeah. creates a nice bit of variety and new attachments for them, which you can spend the like reward points on. Uh, and you know, you can play this story mode or you can just jump into a quick play random map where you can actually enter different seeds and stuff, you know, like in one of those old uh, randomly generated level kind of games. And I think this, this the random generation, it, it's weird because it comes up more and more now in these indie games because it speaks to ambition but not enough development resources yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. it's like i just did a review with cameron the other day and it's the same thing it was a roguelike this one was a top down twin stick shooter one yeah. but randomly generated levels you know because it's difficult to spend all this time making levels so if you have a decent enough algorithm to spit them out i mean how did you feel the levels were how did you feel the flow was it wasn't terrible i've played worse it's basic enough that you can't feel like anything's too out of place it would be hard to get it wrong because they're the the floors that you play through are essentially boxes within boxes you know it's mm. it's, it's difficult for them to flow in a in a better way or a worse way so I, I think it's simple enough that the, the random generation there is quite forgiving. That's one of the reasons why people do this sort of game, I'm sure, isn't it? Like you say, it's much harder to develop crafted levels. And mm. if they are crafted, people expect them to be crafted. There's, there's much more forgiveness in a random generation um, sort of tile set game like this where people appreciate, well, it's, it's just one level amongst... A multitude of random variations how good is it going to be um people don't expect that much i guess but mm. they don't yeah they don't expect you know these handcrafted perfection you know it's it's like you're quite forgiving is what you're saying aren't you mm. i mean uh, and i and I, I definitely agree with that to a degree um how did you feel about the shooting i mean it's not it's not call of duty <laughs> levels of responsive first person shooter action um it is kind of clunky at times and not always responsive and but it but it's good enough i think i would say it works don't expect too much from it i did have a problem with the shooting from the off because the sensitivity was way too high um, okay. i think it's more than sensitivity i think it's the camera as well it feels right. almost glass bowl ish so mm. you're the, the way that the camera sways as you turn feels exaggerated because the angle of view is exaggerated as well so you, it feels like you can see quite a lot around you and that makes the turning appear really sharp and quite drunken in a way you know like the old prodigy video like smack my, smack my bitch up but is yeah. that sort of viewpoint I, I felt a little bit ill yeah you're, you're talking about the field of view yeah right? yeah, yeah the fov um, perhaps a little too extreme. Yes. Yeah, I can I can totally see that actually from what you say. And and the final kind of gameplay point, the bit that sets it apart from a you know in a way from a very basic shooter is the slow mo. Um, and you mentioned like John wooing into rooms, except no diving. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, weird. It's like Sonic without yeah. running, isn't it? I mean, it's still kind of badass though, isn't it? When you kick a door open and it all goes slow-mo and you headshot three guys before it comes back to full speed and they all, all their bodies ragdoll quite, you know, satisfyingly. And then you're you're clearing corners and just shotgunning dudes in the face as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, it, it, feel, it feels fun. I mean, it feels like, like you said, a good 20 minute distraction or maybe an hour if you're really getting into it. Um, but it's 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 an experience it's not like you know they've set out to make some grandiose game and they've fallen short i feel like they've got you know solidly like 85 percent of the way there to really nailing the vision and i'd be curious enough to see what they do next because um i think it's a, a fairly i don't know if it's their first game honestly i don't know those details it feels like an early game um mm. but maybe not their first but um yeah there's some talent there and it's a fun enough experience yeah it, it works. I think I think you're right. They're mm. not set ambitions too high. I think it achieves what it sets out to do. Um, don't expect too much, but then there is a place for this sort of game. Not everything has to be some grand vision. It's a video game. Enjoy it. It's good. I'm just uh, I'm on their uh, their press page. 
and they've got a boilerplate talking about themselves here and it's quite amusing. It's a ground shatter is a contradiction, treading the line between abject cynicism and unfettered positivity, free spirit iconoclasm and searing professionalism with one foot in the seaside arcades of the past and the other in the cutting edge technology of the now. I think that sums them up quite well. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> there's a there's a tongue in firmly in cheek there, isn't there? So <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. I like that a lot. Mm. So uh, I look forward to seeing what Ground Shatter Limited does next um, because Rico is a is a fun enough game for under 20 quid yeah it's a good little diversion so I think that brings us to the end of another episode of Experience Kills wouldn't you agree Rich? I think so uh, that has been Orico and we are obviously like I just mentioned Experience Kills with which you can find us on Twitter at Experience Kills and then we have our personal accounts I am at DIYE where can people find you Richard? I'm at Colonel Red on Twitter and please make sure, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, and even if you're not, please seek out YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the channel. That's what's really going to help keep us going. Uh, like the videos. You know, the more visibility we get on the on the channel, you know, the, the more likes we get and all that, the better the videos do, the more we can produce, you know. So that's what we want to keep doing. Uh, also, this is all available uh, on audio. If you don't have time to watch a video, you can as well listen through iTunes or uh, what do they call it now? Apple Podcasts. I don't think it's called iTunes anymore. Weirdly, they rebranded that. Uh, we're on Spotify. We've got an RSS feed. If you have any other areas you would like to find the audio on, do let me know and I can see if I can put it up in that provider as well. Uh, we'll be back soon with exciting more content. So until then, <laughs> I bid you adieu. Goodbye. Bye. Waveforms.